In addition to pursuing ASEAN interests as country coordinator for the EU, I will always as, uh, certainly push for Philippine priorities within the context of the ASEAN-EU cooperation, particularly in post-pandemic economic recovery and trade, maritime cooperation, and of course, climate action. Preceding the commemorative summit is the 10th ASEAN-EU Business Summit, hosted by the EU ASEAN Business Council. A C-suite luncheon on the occasion of the Business Summit will be hosted for ASEAN leaders and guests from the private sector. Uh, it is up to me uh, to, as a coordinator. Uh, the Philippines is the coordinator country uh, for the, uh, between ASEAN and EU. So I will deliver the closing remarks at the C-suite luncheon and at the business summit itself. Um, I'm here today to brief you on the uh, next uh, trip of the president, uh, which will be uh, to uh, Brussels, Belgium. He's going to attend the uh, ASEAN-EU Commemorative Summit. And this is important because this will mark the 45th anniversary of ASEAN-EU relations. Um, if you will remember, um, ASEAN-EU relations was uh, established actually in 1977. Uh, three years ahead of the uh, conferment of a dialogue partnership status to uh, EU by ASEAN in 1980. Now, since then, the uh, relations between uh, EU and ASEAN has grown by uh, leaps and bounds, uh, so much so that uh, 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 by 2020, we were already able to confer upon uh, uh, EU the status of a strategic uh, partner. So, okay, um, the trip will last from uh, 12 December to uh, 14 December. The summit proper itself will be on the 14th, and uh, this is what is expected of the president. This is very important for the Philippines and for the president because the Philippines is currently the uh, country coordinator of ASEAN in its relations with the European Union. We, uh, and uh, for two more years, we'll, we will be the ca country coordinator. So uh, uh, we were instrumental, of course, in cooperation with the uh, European Union and the uh, other members of ASEAN in preparing for this summit. Uh, we led ASEAN in the preparations uh, for this summit. So uh, the role of the president uh, is very important in this regard. Now, um, the summit proper will be on December 14. Um, the president will uh, uh, speak on several occasions. Uh, during the plenary of the uh, summit proper itself, of the commemorative summit, is one of the officials, the leaders of ASEAN and EU, who will deliver the opening remarks. After that, he will be giving uh, the, an omnibus intervention uh, as a country uh, head of the delegate of uh, the Republic of the Philippines. Then after that, at the closing ceremony, he's also expected to, uh, uh, to be one of the officials who will give the closing remarks. And in fact, at this, uh, right after that, even at the press conference, he will be one of the uh, ASEAN and EU officials to uh, participate in the press conference. Apat lang sila doon sa press conference, but uh, uh, the president will be uh, one of them. But uh, this uh, trip will not only uh, focus on ASEAN-EU uh, re uh, EU relations. Uh, sa kinagibihan, merong uh, gala dinner, itong uh, ASEAN-EU uh, summit. But uh, earlier in the day, on the, uh, in the first half of the day of the 14th, meron ding meeting si Presidente with uh, the uh, business community. In fact, there'll be one-on-one -on -one meetings with uh, uh, big corporations who will be expanding or, uh, their presence in the Philippines. That means uh, more investments and more jobs for us Filipinos. And then uh, there'll be a business roundtable uh, uh, with uh, uh, EU and uh, European uh, uh, corporations during which uh, the president will have the uh, opportunity to expound on our trade and investment policies to attract more, of course, uh, trade and investments from uh, Europe. Then, kasama rin dito yung round table, rather uh, networking among Filipino businessmen and uh, European businessmen. Uh, hopefully, for this networking, the Filipino businessmen will be able to come up with deals with their European counterparts. Now, um, uh, to uh, provide more detail on the one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one meetings of the president with uh, key 
uh, European corporations. Suffice it to say that uh, he will me be meeting with Unilever. Uh, and this is important because uh, this corporation is intending to uh, uh, establish a new state-of-the-art manufacturing facility for personal care products in Cavite. So expansion of investments ito, no? to the tune of 4.7 billion pesos. Now it's expected to generate at least 130 uh, uh, projected employment for the Philippines. Now um, uh, the 130 no, uh, new jobs. Uh, he's also expected to have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, one -on -one meeting with uh, OSEA, the shipbuilding uh, and navigation and logistics company, who are intending to develop a shipyard with an investment of 1.5 billion pesos and which will create 500 to 600 direct and indirect jobs. No? And then also with Akshona, it's an infrastructure and renewable energy company which intends to invest in renewable energy, energy sector in the Philippines. Then Simaris, um, it's a um, wholesale market in international logistics hub, uh, a management company or corporation, which intends to develop an agro-logistics at the new Clark City that will build and operate a wholesale market for fresh products with an organized and efficient uh, food supply and uh, value chain. So these are only among the uh, few companies na kakausapin ni Presidente, which we believe will expand investments in the Philippines and therefore generate uh, more jobs. So, um, but uh, there will also be a meeting with the Filipino community uh, on uh, December 12, uh, 2022. So, um, uh, now on the 13th of December, uh, there will be further meeting with the business uh, sector, but this time with ASEAN and EU themselves within the framework of the ASEAN-EU uh, 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 dialogue partnership uh, relations. No? So um, the President um, on December 13, uh, noon time, will participate at the C-suite or the CEO suite luncheon of, for the uh, EU-ASEAN Business Summit where he is expected to speak. And then at the same time, he will also participate in the uh, 10th ASEAN EU Business Summit proper itself, where again, he will be expected to uh, uh, deliver his remarks. So uh, this will be a very busy uh, trip for the president, and we hope that uh, this will be down to uh, uh, a lot of uh, benefits for uh, the Filipino people, not only for ASEAN. There are also uh, expected, um, we also ex uh, ho uh, expect to hold around 10 bilateral meetings on the side. No? with uh, uh, 10 countries. Belgium, he will call on the King of Belgium. And this is important because we will be marking the 76th year of the diplomatic relations between the Philippines and Belgium. And at the same time, uh, this intends to expand cooperation between this country, our country, and Belgium in terms of agricultural uh, cooperation and renewable energy. He will also have a bilateral meeting uh, with Estonia, um, in which uh, we can discuss uh, cyber cooperation and uh, a pending extradition treaty. And then uh, with the Czech Republic, with which we will be celebrating the 50th year of our uh, diplomatic relations. Czech Republic is also important because we have defense cooperation with the Czech Republic and are also um, proposed uh, technology transfers uh, in the realm of uh, defense. Now, um, he will also have bilateral uh, uh, meetings with, um, with Spain, which is again important because they will be uh, the EU Council President at the second half of next year in 2023. And then uh, Spain has just acceded or, uh, to uh, the Treaty of Amity Co and Cooperation of uh, ASEAN. Dapat sana nga pipirmahan na during the last summit. No? Kaya lang nga dinilay muna. No? But uh, the signing will come. Then we have defense cooperation with, you know, with uh, Spain also, from which we also purchase some heavy lift air transports. Then uh, the further uh, bilateral uh, meetings will be held with Denmark, with which we will also celebrate the 75th years of uh, bilateral cooperation. And uh, Denmark is important because we have um, maritime cooperation with Denmark, uh, as well as shipbuilding cooperation. Uh, in fact, uh, there is a shipbuilding facility in Cebu, the uh, Austal Philippines, uh, recently produced a uh, passenger ferry for the Philippines from Cebu. Then uh, other uh, bilateral uh, meetings will be held with Germany, Poland, 
Finland, the Netherlands, and of course the European Union. With the European Union, it's important because they are a partner as uh, uh, co-coordinators in the ASEAN EU uh, commemorative summit. So, uh, about the preparations and uh, the way forward for ASEAN uh, EU relations as well as Philippines EU relations, including the way forward for uh, the pending uh, Philippine EU uh, free trade uh, agreement. So I guess I'll uh, stop at this point and uh, open myself to uh, your questions. Yeah, thank you. Marisal Halili from TV5. Sir, magandang hapon po. Yeah, magandang um, hapon. Sir, aside from the business issues, what are the other issues that the President will bring up during the ASEAN-EU Summit? Oh, marami. Uh, kasi uh, sabi-sabi ko kanina, magkakaroon ng plenary. No? During which, oh my God, this is very big. Not only the nine ASEAN countries will speak, but also the leaders of the 27 uh, EU countries. So, uh, including the ASEAN Secretariat and the... Uh, leadership of EU nowadays, probably 38 leaders ang magsasalita. So, uh, uh, the President will carry there all our priorities and concerns. Of course, uh, hindi lang yung uh, concerns ng Pilipinas, but also the concerns natin sa ASEAN. No? But uh, for the Philippines, the important issues are, of course, most important is uh, the post-pandemic recovery. Not only in terms of uh, public health uh, recovery, but also in terms of economic recovery. So, diyan papasok ngayon yung issues of energy and food security, the, uh, uh, addressing the uh, disruption in the supply chain, and then, of course, um, maritime security, uh, digital economy and digital transformation, kasi that's the wave of our future na nakita na natin nung uh, magkaroon ng pandemic. Uh, we have been adopting e-commerce, e-delivery, and the like, which is a new area of uh, expansion for uh, our economy. And uh, also, um, climate action and biodiversity management and conservation which is very important uh, for all of us. Uh, of course, MSMEs are further concerns. And of course, uh, uh, kasama dyan din yung discussion of international and regional developments, which includes discussions on the South China Sea, on CLUS, uh, Ukraine, and other developments around the world. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Sir, how about the delegation? Sino po yung makakasama sa okay. Philippine delegation? Hindi pa tapos yung delegation, no? Uh, binubuo pa, no? But... Uh, uh, suffice it to say that uh, the President will be accompanied by uh, the officials of the Department of Foreign Affairs as well as of uh, the Department of Trade and Industry kasi nakita nyo ang daming business meetings and uh, uh, yung uh, latest list nakita namin yung pangalan ni uh, uh, former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo um, si uh, DICT Secretary Jonathan Uy and uh, also Senator Mark Villar but uh, hindi pa tapos tong, ano, itong uh, delegation list yeah. Salamat po Thank you Nestor Corrales, Inquirer. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, the European Union early this year flagged the Philippines for deficiencies in local seafaring training and education. Uh, will the President discuss this issue with the European Union since 50,000 Filipinos working in EU vessels are at, le are at risk of losing jobs if the EU imposes ban on Filipino seafarers? Okay, I don't have the details, but that's one of the matters that will be discussed para ma-address na natin yan. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any question from MPC? Raquel Bayan, Radio Pilipinas. Uh, sir, do we have data po how many Filipinos are there in Brussels po? Oh, uh, I don't have that figure right now, no? Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have that figure right now. Oh. All right, sir, you mentioned po kanina yung possible na EU and Philippine uh, free trade agreement. How about po yung ASEAN and uh, EU free trade agreement po? Okay, pareho yan pending. No? Uh, uh, ongoing negotiations, but uh, at this point, uh, may mga issues between the two sides na medyo pending pa. So, naka, nakatenga yan. Uh, in fact, uh, the last we heard was that uh, uh, ASEAN already uh, made its comments on the latest draft. So, kumbaga, yung uh, papel ngayon nasa court na ng uh, EU. So, we're uh, waiting for their uh, response uh, on this one. Yeah, but napakarami ng issues na nakalagay doon. And we have to make sure that all national interests of the ASEAN member countries, and especially the Philippines for us, would be addressed at hindi naman ma-disadvantage. So, it's, we do not have to hurry that up. No? We'll, we'll, uh, we'd rather have... Uh, 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 truly advantageous uh, free trade agreement than uh, a hurried one na uh, nasa sacrifice yung interest ng uh, uh, mga Pilipino. Yeah, thank you. And then Suarez, Net25. 
Hi, sir. Hi. Uh, uh, na- may mga nabanggit po kayong figures kanina regarding dun sa mga pledges, investment, mm-hmm. ganyan. Siyempre po inaasahan ng, at, ng uh, business sectors dito sa atin, especially po yung mga Pilipino. Uh, kung how much po ba, yung, meron na ba tayong mga state, uh, estimate na kung magkano yung makukuhang uh, may uwing investment ng Pangulo? Oh, uh, from yeah. the Brussels trip po. Yeah, gaya nga nasabi ko kanina, uh, dito pa lang sa Unilever, we're lo- now looking at 4.7 billion, 4.7 billion pesos no, in investments. And then dito naman sa OSEA, doon sa shipyard uh, development, 1.5 billion. At ang most important is yung uh, uh, initial employment that may be generated. No? Dito sa Unilever, mga 130 dito sa ano naman sa shipbuilding 500 to 600 direct and indirect jobs. So, yung iba, of course lahat 'yan pagka may investment, uh, that means employment, no? Uh, wala pang ano uh, figures yung iba but there will be, no? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, positive po ba tayo na talagang magpapasok itong mga 'to kasi sabi ng uh, ECOP yung mga previous na mga investment pledges, yung mga uh, negos and agreements po, hindi naman halos lahat na tutuloy. Yeah, uh-oh. Uh-oh. kasi yung iba kuminsang plano pa lang, di ba? But this one are in the pipeline already. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Pa. Okay. Any question from MPC? Pia Gutierrez, ABS-CBN. Hi, sir. Hi, yes. Sir, nabanggit niyo po na isa sa pag-uusapan yung Ukraine-Russia conflict. So, do we expect the ASEAN to uh, at least express stronger support for the EU's position on the Ukraine-Russia conflict? Sir? Okay. Um, When it comes to position, ASEAN has its own position in the same way that we have our own position. No? Klaro naman yung position ng uh, ASEAN on that uh, ever since uh, this conflict began. No? We are uh, for the uh, uh, self-restraint of the parties concerned na sana hindi na mag-escalate further itong bakbakan na ito. And uh, we, are, uh, we have expressed serious concern dun sa humanitarian crisis which uh, it uh, uh, generated. And at the same time, we are calling on all parties to... Uh, Uh, go to the negotiating table no? para kung, kung, kung pwede mabigyan na ng peaceful resolution itong uh, conflict na ito. Uh, at the same time, uh, we are, uh, ASEAN has always expressed serious concern about the uh, uh, global impact of this conflict, especially economically, no? in terms of the disrupt- disruption of the, of the supply chain, uh, energy shortage, uh, food shortage, and also uh, yung uh, shortage of fertilizers and the like. And uh, of course, overall, ang laki ng impact nito sa inflation around the world which is being felt felt uh, ng lahat ng bansa including the Philippines no in fact this is the parang albatross that's dragging down uh, economic growth uh, across all uh, uh, the, uh, across uh, all countries so um, these are the things na uh, na uh, sina- sinabi na ng ASEAN and this will be reflected dito sa discussions sa uh, sa coming plenary ng uh, ano ASEAN and EU uh, uh, kung mag kung magkatugma man yung ano posisyon ng EU at ASEAN, uh, nagkatugma lang talaga. Simply because, probably because we have, uh, we share a lot of values and we share this, uh, ano, yung the same negative impact ng effects of that war. And but of course, uh, we are united in a uh, ano in our recognition of the principle of sovereignty, non-aggression, and of course uh, territorial integrity. Sir, during the summit, will the ASEAN explore the possibility of uh, imposing unilateral sanctions against Russia? Not that we heard of. Salamat, sir. No, kasi it's a matter of consensus, di ba? Uh, kahit may ilang countries na gusto kung merong ayaw or cautious, kasi hindi, naman, hindi lang naman sanctions ang, uh, ang uh, possible response dyan. Anyway, sanctions is already here, di ba? Uh, it's already being imposed by uh, Western countries. So, um, Probably we could explore other por- oh no, uh, other uh, actions. Another question from Nestor Corrales. Sir, you mentioned earlier that uh, one of the issues to discuss during the summit was the South China Sea issue. Mm-hmm. So will the president uh, seek European support for the Philippines' effort to resolve maritime dispute with, South, with China in the South China Sea? And if yes, what particular support will the Philippine government ask from the European Union? Well, at this point, the European has already been supporting the Philippines on the South China Sea, no? including sa arbitral, sa arbitral. Uh, and this is only, and this is not only true in terms of uh, 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 European Union as a whole, but uh, may mga individual members who have uh, supported us even sa arbitral award. But of course, uh, continued yung ano natin, uh, pag-carry ng uh, Philippine government ng uh, mga position natin dyan sa, uh, sa ASEAN and sa uh, pakikipag- uh, 
talakayan with the EU. Are there commitments from the EU that the President would like to seek, like stronger support in terms of uh, 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 patrol in the disputed sea? Yung actual patrol siguro, uh, medyo malayo kasi yung EU eh, malayo tayo. Um, but uh, enough na yun na uh, ang lakas ng pronouncements nila pa ulit-ulit in support of the Philippines uh, on the issue. Thank yeah. you. Uh, ano nga, arrange mo pa yung ano, actual patrol. We are not discounting that but of course, uh, malaking undertaking nga kung sakali. You know? uh, wala naman sa card so far. Asek Daniel, uh, may we ask for a closing statement? Ah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much uh, ladies and gentlemen for coming no? uh, on a short notice. Um, we just gave this briefing so that uh, you would already uh, more or less have an idea of what, what to cover in the next few days uh, during the progress of uh, uh, this summit. No? Uh, not only um, from the uh, perspective of Philippine interest, but also from the perspective of uh, uh, the region. Now, uh, uh, we hope that uh, at the end of the summit, uh, there will be an adoption of the ASEAN-EU Leaders Declaration. And uh, among the deliverables uh, would also be the uh, program of action on ASEAN-EU comprehensive cooperation for the next five years from 2023 to 2027, kung saan napapaloob yung sinabi na nating areas of priority kanina. No? Uh, Post-pandemic, uh, uh, public health recovery and economic recovery, energy security, food security, um, uh, maritime uh, cooperation and maritime security, uh, uh, MSMEs, uh, uh, digital transformation and digital economy, uh, climate action and uh, uh, biodiversity uh, management and conservation and other areas. Um, Napaka makapalho yung ano yung uh, program of action and I cannot uh, describe all the details but uh, puno po yun ng areas of cooperation between ASEAN and uh, EU. Yan. So yun po. Thank you very much po sa inyong lahat. Thank you very much Assistant Secretary Daniel Espiritu of DFA Office of ASEAN Affairs. Thank you. And maraming salamat. Malakanyang. Good evening. Uh, peace. Uh, thank you, sis. Uh, Vice President uh, Inday Sara. Uh, the uh, members of the cabinet, uh, House Speaker uh, Martin, uh, Congressman Martin Romualdez, the AFP cha Steve, uh, Chief of Staff, uh, Lieutenant General Bacaro, and our other major service commanders, uh, the members of the media who are those who are accompanying and those who are not, and of course, always our uh, <laughs> uh, who is always here for us is our, our good uh, mayor, Mayor uh, Calixto Rubiano. Uh, of course, uh, First Lady, Lisa Marcos. I only do that to annoy you. <laughs> Fellow workers in government, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. In a short while, I depart for Brussels upon the invitation of the European Council President Charles Michel, Charles Shall Shall Michel, to attend the ASEAN European Union Commemorative Summit on the 14th. The standalone summit is celebrating 45 years of ASEAN EU relations with in depth discussions on the most relevant issues concerning both regional organizations, such as global and regional security challenges sustainable development, and economic cooperation, amongst other things. This will be the first meeting between ASEAN and EU member states leaders at the EU headquarters. And I am pleased to highlight the Philippines' role as country coordinator for ASEAN in its dialogue relations with the EU. In addition to pursuing ASEAN interests as country coordinator for the EU, I will always as uh, certainly push for Philippine priorities within the context of the ASEAN-EU cooperation, particularly in post-pandemic economic recovery and trade, maritime cooperation, and of course, climate action. Preceding the commemorative summit is the 10th ASEAN-EU Business Summit, hosted by the EU-ASEAN Business Council, a C-suite luncheon on the occasion of the Business Summit will be hosted for ASEAN leaders and guests from the private sector. Uh, it is up to me uh, to, as a coordinator. Uh, the Philippines is the coordinator country uh, for the, uh, between ASEAN and EU. So I will deliver the closing remarks at the C-suite luncheon and at the business summit itself. 
These events provide an opportunity to drum up economic interest once again and engagement for the Philippines in view of the presence of key business leaders in Europe at the event. I will also call upon the King, Philippe of Belgium, as well as hold bilateral meetings with some of my counterparts in Europe. And of course, I look forward to meeting the Filipino community in Belgium. And after the successful series of summits hosted by us and Chair Cambodia last month, I look forward to a productive and meaningful summit that recognizes ASEAN and the EU's four and a half decades of long-standing relations. And this uh, we will continue to do, and we are very proud. To, although I am representing the Philippines, I am now also representing all of ASEAN. But nonetheless, as I have mentioned, Philippine interest will always enter into all of my discussions. Thank you very much, and good evening.